it it really underscores uh, for you sitting here comfortably in Boise, Idaho, uh, with the kind of challenges that go on around the world. We had Idahoans contact us on about 300 people who are non-U.S. citizens. They're in various stages of applying for a visa or something like that. So uh, th those those are more challenging and, and the results were, were much more checkered than the ones who were Idaho, U.S. citizens, uh, uh, residents of Idaho. Those we were 100% successful in getting them out. Senator Jim Risch on how his office has been busy during the evacuation of, of Afghanistan, where a week ago more than 100 people were killed, including 13 U.S. service members at the Kabul airport during those evacuation efforts. More than 100 U.S. citizens still today are attempting to navigate their way home. Senator Risch successfully brought home around 10 U.S. citizens. Back to Idaho last week, Katya Stepovic spoke to one of those Idahoans who was able to make it home safely. Wahida Ivy is a United States citizen who was born in Afghanistan and left in 1981 when Russia invaded the country. That childhood nightmare will never go away because I lived it. But you know, this last trip that I took it to, to Afghanistan, I just, it tops it. Wahida says her six day trip was to see her sister and cousins potentially for the last time. The six day trip felt like a six year journey. Any Afghan would have an idea what's about to happen. The word of uh, we must leave Afghanistan as far as United States decision to get out of the country after 20 years, and rightfully so. I knew uh, what was about to happen. Uh, I also knew that if I didn't go see my sister, I'd probably never get to see her again. But Wahida and her family never pictured that this is what the end of the war would look like. People that worked for the United States, for the companies, uh, to get them out first, they should be priority. If it was anything but that, it was total disorganization, mm -hmm. uh, to say the least. Wahida says she made five attempts to get on a plane back to America. I called my husband. Well, he was in contact with me. But I told him, I said, I, I think tonight if I don't call you back or if I didn't hear from you or you didn't hear from me, it's, I'm probably going to be dead somewhere. Pushing, shoving, Taliban's are there at the gate. They're hitting people with the wires. And I have bruises. Um, I took a couple of the hits. Um, they, they don't see people. They just see them as, as, as like this rush of animals standing at the doors. And these people are just desperate to make it through that gate. During one of her attempts, she decided this time her sister was coming with her. They don't check really any of your documents. They just open the gate enough for at least four, five, six people out of a thousands to get in. And we got in a line. We were there all day from 5.30 in the morning all the way till 9 p.m. where she passed out and I passed out. And mind you, this is almost like a mile walk. Um, no water, no food, and the temperature was horrendous. She passed out eventually at 9 o'clock. She said, I don't want to be here. I want to go home. And we were literally right in front of American soldier waiting for them to open the gate. Wahida says her sister is older and not in good health. She simply couldn't handle the conditions any longer and went back home. On the fifth attempt, Wahida boarded the plane with her cousin, who is an active U.S. Embassy employee. She said her cousin was not let in, but 400 non-U.S. citizens were. We saw women got on the floor. People were just walking on them. We saw babies, literally babies, and I'm sure you saw a couple of images where the soldiers was watching this happening. So instead of, you know, doing, I mean, they were just pulling babies by the arm from, you know, falling on the ground with their mother holding them, being pushed to the gates. When the suicide bombing happened, you know, you see this river of blood. And what kind of, I mean, you just can. Not everybody have the stomach for it. Even after 45 years of war, mm -hmm. you can stomach seeing people's shoes, seeing people clothes, seeing their blood is just running down that river. 
and, and, and just say, pretend like it's not there, mm -hmm. you just can't. The other thing she can't forget, the situation that her sister and thousands of others are left in. Under Taliban's uh, in control of the country, women have no place. You can't be a lady at any age, go out just to get yourself a grocery, something as simple as that, unless you have a, ma a man accompany you or have an escort with you, a male escort with you to go out and do the basic everyday life thing. Right now she's terrified. Uh, I talked to her yesterday. The street that she lives in, uh, when she got up in the morning, was hit twice with the rockets. So she was in her basement, literally in her basement, terrified, because they don't know where the next rocket or bullet's going to come from. So yeah, all around for, in particular, women, it's, it's not easy to be there or live there. And you're not there to be able to protect her? No, I'm not. Mm. How does that make you feel? Sad. Very sad. Um, especially know that um, this was going to happen. It did happen. And you know what's going to happen. Um, this was a 40 year war and still continues to this day. While she is forever grateful to be back home, she says there's more to be done. We must hold on to that promise that we made to the, to the people that worked for us, to the people that hold our hands when we needed our hands to be held, um, that they, they deserve much better than that. And that we should not turn our backs to them. Uh, <laughs> um, it's not okay. I want people to understand that these are also human beings. <laughs> they have families, they have children. It is their home, but it's not a home safe for them to live in. Now, Senator Risch was able to bring back, um, I'm sorry, Senator Risch was happy to be able to bring back Wahida and several others safely back to Idaho. But he says the process was a bit challenging. He worked with the State Department and gave specific instructions to Wahida's husband to relay to her. He's no stranger to this process, but he admits that this situation was unique simply because of the chaotic conditions on the ground. And like he said before, there are still about 100 U.S. citizens still needing to get out. Brian. Yeah, but all of the Idahoans that wanted to get back that had the proper paperwork are back home. Is that correct? Correct. Yes, the uh, U.S. citizens from Idaho are all back. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you very much, Katya.